I have a favourite saying, when a guy with experience meets a guy with money, the guy with experience goes away with the money, and the guy with money goes away with the experience. It's a bit like that in amateur radio. In the 1950s and 60s, a lot of American amateurs, often novices, read ads in QST and other magazines for the Gotham vertical antenna. It claimed multi-band operation with no radials but amazing DX results. Of course, many of those early expectations were not met, and they would have been better off making something with a bit of wire, possibly salvaged from the local radio repairers, or an old transformer. Twenty or so years later, there is a fresh crop of newcomers again diddled by shonky antennas, possibly claiming high efficiency, broadband performance, little space, and undoubtedly no radials. When you had a look at this mystery matching box that was the trade secret to its success, it was hard to get into for a start. Maybe the manufacturer didn't really want you to know it was just a giant resistor, or at best an inefficient coil capacitor combination. This delusion is happening again, and I'm here to call it out. But instead of a kid losing three months of pocket money, or a novice not getting replies to their calls, the consequences are potentially a bit more serious. I'm talking about survival or emergency communications, and the whole industry that's grown up around it. It's not so much of an issue here in Australia, because you know, she'll be right. But in America, they take this stuff real seriously. Preparing for the Armageddon, the Acropolis, or whatever it's called. Some even get their ham license just so they can have an off-grid emergency communications capability. That's all very good. They have a desire to get kitted up with radio gear. And there's plenty of people with experience to sell it to them. So the guy with money meets the guy with experience and, well, you know the rest. I don't know a great deal about emergency preparedness. But I do know a little about the capabilities of the types of gear offered to people that pursue it. And I can tell you that some of the products marketed are just toys. That's fine. Using some minimalist QRP gear can be a bit of a challenge, and as it's a leisure activity and not life or death, it doesn't really matter if you don't always succeed in making contacts. But if you're really serious about emergency type communication, then you really need to know the capabilities of equipment. You don't want something so crude that it won't work for you. And even worse, you don't want something that engenders a false sense of security. Otherwise, you could be wasting a lot of time and effort for nothing. Look, when everything goes to custard, there's basically only two things you can do. Stay or leave. If you're staying, that means holding yourself up into your basement, bunker, bomb shelter or whatever, and eating off your tin food and all your other provisions you've got there. You don't have to be carrying your radio equipment around, so it doesn't have to be so small and light. All you really need is an independent power source and robust antennas, so you can get on the air. If you're going to flee, this means taking only the essentials, i.e. the tin food and whatever else you need. But what about the transmitter? Definitely less important than the tin opener. If you leave that behind and the family gets angry, you might find yourself threatened by the very gun that some regard as even more essential. But back to topic. There's a lot of twaddle peddled by self-interested or perhaps nostalgic or ignorant parties about the capabilities of sending CW in an emergency. There's possibly a romantic tale about taking radio sets apart, building a CW transmitter and then summoning help to your sinking ship or your burning house or whatever. But think about it, it makes a good yarn, but the probability of that actually happening is very rare, particularly in 2017. Maybe I'm blowing this up a bit. Well, let's have a look at the ads. A nice novelty, good for code practice. But I think the ad really goes beyond the pale when they talk about its potential for emergency communications. For a start, it's only a transmitter. 
add a receiver and a decent sized antenna and you're much bigger than a keychain. Plus, it's very low power and crystal controlled on a single frequency. The chance of anyone tuning by to pick up your call is pretty low. And if you don't have a receiver, you're not going to hear if anyone responds, even if you are heard by some stroke of good luck. Now, of course, to be fair to the ad, it does talk about a receiver and the possibility of some handhelds or shortwave radios being used. But that's pretty crude. And if you want to hear other CW or SSB signals coming back to you, then you'll need a beat frequency oscillator, which the cheaper receivers don't have. There's nonsense spoken about other QRP rigs, especially of the minimalist type. People might be posting on survivalist forums, and typically they are a survivalist first and a radio enthusiast second, if at all. They don't have a great deal of knowledge about radio, transmitters, antennas, or their capabilities. In such case, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing and give you a false sense of security. Unless you're willing to spend a decent amount and get a capable transceiver set up, then you're probably better off not to bother about radio at all. As well as being low power, crystal controlled on a fixed frequency, and other things that make it very unlikely you'll get results, there's also the operator skill. A diminishing number of radio amateurs know Morse code, and even those that do might not be able to hear your signal under poor receiving conditions. And remember, we're talking about emergency communication, which is pretty serious, and the consequences of not being able to make contact are much more than the normal recreational leisure type ham radio activity. What might a real emergency communication radio setup look like? For a start, it needs to have a general coverage receiver. Not just to hear other radio amateurs, but shortwave stations, weather reports, other activity from locally and around the world. You also need frequency agility. There's nothing more frustrating to be hearing a station, but not being able to call them back because you've got a crystal on the wrong frequency. There's so many frequencies that you've really got to have a frequency agile transceiver, preferably also general coverage, noting that if Armageddon really strikes, then there's not going to be any licensing authority to police the radio frequency spectrum. Other benefits include robustness, decent RF power output, and low current consumption, particularly on receive. That's so that whatever you set up as a power supply is going to be last for hours, if not days. As you can tell, I'm not really into this survivalist stuff. But if you are, and you want to muck around with radio, then make sure you've got something that meets your objectives. Not just a pathetic $10 QRP transmitter that's going to give you wrist exercise, but have a very low chance of being heard. If you want more ideas on small transmitters, portable amateur radio, and operating that works, then check out some of my previous videos or my ebook Minimum QRP. It's available for under $5 US and you can get it through Amazon. Just search on the title.